Welcome inside the arena. I'm Monica McNutt alongside Las Vegas Aces president Nikki Fargus. And Nikki, flat out, momentum seems to be the name of this game. When you look at this Oregon Duck squad that now is facing another top 10 team in three days. Well, they're going to bring that momentum into the, to the night's game. And I bet you one thing that you're going to see, you're going to see an up and down pace game because Oregon right now has depth on their side. Thank you, Monica and Nikki. And indeed, on this Martin Luther King Day, we are also honoring Pat Summit and her continued impact on women's basketball, both on and off the court. We all back Pat. That's Steph White. I'm Pam Ward. Now, this UConn team still in the top 10. No AZ FUD, no Paige Beckers, and another blow today. Kristen Williams is not available. Yeah, this is a huge blow to UConn. Not only is Kristen Williams their leading scorer, she's their primary playmaker, and she has been sensational on the defensive end of the floor. UConn is really going to have to get more production by committee, but it's going to start with Avina Westbrook and Olivia Nelson Adota. And for Oregon, they have a full roster for the second straight game, and the big three are back. They have played four games together. They average almost 44 points combined. What this does for Kelly Graves, it puts the playmakers back on the floor offensively. It allows the role players to play their role, play inside of themselves. We're going to see a full complement today of the offensive playbook. And you're also going to see a great crowd. There's Niara Sobley getting ready to tip against Olivia Nelson Adora. And we are underway. Nika Mule back in the starting lineup. This is her making her fourth straight start. No Kristen Williams, Alvina Westbrook back in the starting lineup. And right away, they attack inside to Caroline Ducharme, who has really blossomed with all of the other injuries. Well, we saw Oregon working on that play, defending it yesterday in practice. And really is a mismatch right there. Have to work really t difficult. Have to make it really difficult for her to get a touch. Oregon coming out 48 hours after a thrilling overtime win against Arizona, also in the top 10, trying to get those back-to-back -back upsets. Shot clock winding down, long three. Good box out by Westbrook. Chase for the ball is taken by Parrish. And now on the other side, shot off the mark by Pow Pow. Her fifth game back from an injury. Remember, she hurt herself not participate late in the season last year. Good hustle by Parrish. Shear, who has been running the point. Another three in Oregon. Off to a slow start from the outside. They've missed all three of their shots, all of them so far coming from beyond the arc. Nice. Boy, Mule with a terrific look inside to Nelson Agoto. Well, Gino Oriema talked to us about Mika Mule, and she just changes things for them offensively when she's on the floor. Great vision, ability to deliver the pass. Says that she is so intense sometimes. That has to dial it back a little bit with a sweet assist, and UConn's out to the 4 nothing start. Only eight players available for the Huskies this afternoon. Pow Pow, another three. They've not taken a two yet, Steph. Well, what the zone does is it lures, lures you into thinking that you have wide open three-point shots. Oregon really does need to establish himself inside as Ducharme gets a bucket in one. There's Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd leading the cheers on the sideline. Great start for the Huskies. Yeah, Chury is in transition, pushing when they have an opportunity. And what great confidence Caroline Ducharme is playing with. I mean, this is a player who, if Paige Beckers is on the floor, if AZ Fudd is on the floor, probably doesn't get a lot of minutes this season. She talked to us about being prepared for her opportunity, and she sure has taken advantage of it. In fact, uh, Caroline Ducharme in her first four games scored four total points, all of them in one game. That was against the University of Minnesota. Only had one field goal then. And since then has come on, averaging 16 points per game since Beckers got hurt. Shear saved it. You see how stagnant Oregon is offensively. They're not getting any paint touches. They need another three. Nope, a long two taken as the shot clock expires. And Oregon now has gone almost three minutes into this game and has not yet scored a point. Westbrook, who is from Salem, Oregon, has a lot of people here. Got it inside to Dorka Juhas, who got fouled. 
Gino Oriema, who has had the most brilliant of careers with an 11 national championships and uh, in his 37th season, uh, was talking to us today about the, the challenges. He says we have four players who can hit outside shots on this team <laughs> and three of them aren't playing. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, the, the game is about shot making. It certainly is a problem. But what, what they do have is they have a system that is an equal opportunity system. They have a system where anybody can be in any position on the floor. So when you don't have perimeter players, as they only have three, their bigs can work around the perimeter because it's what they do every day. Juhas missed the second one, but a terrific rebound. Nelson Udata draws another foul. Senior from Winder, Georgia, at the free throw line. <laughs> Kelly Graves, the head coach for this Oregon team. It's a big win against Arizona the other day. And he was talking in practice when his team was going through it yesterday. He said, no, you got to run it at UConn pace. He mm -hmm. thought they were a little bit too slow. And we have seen UConn coming out of the gates very quickly. This time, good passing around the perimeter. Finally, Sydney Parrish breaks the drought. Sydney Parrish is one of those players that benefits from having the big three back on the floor. You know, she can play the wing, she can play the stretch four. She's a catch and shoot type of player, and she gets more of those opportunities with Rogers and Pow Pow. Westbrook misses the outside shot. Oregon is the best three point shooting team in the Pac 12, hitting 38% coming into this game. Sabali, they kind of left her open. Why not, Pam? That is her third make in six attempts from distance this year. And just like that, they're only down four. Good defense by Sobley. That's good catch by Mule. Oh, good seal by Nelson Adota. That pass was just a little bit late, but she was able to get it back. Good effort to get it inside. When you see the 2-2-1 by UConn, really want to try to slow the pace down. They don't want to allow Oregon to get in an up-tempo game. In order to set that 2-2-1, you have to score the basketball, and UConn's been doing that. UConn has hit four of its five shots this afternoon. Not a lot of movement right now by Oregon. Pace is very slow, passing around the perimeter. And the shot clock winding down. Turnover on a traveling call. Well, Oregon does a good job finding the skip pass, the extra pass. Sydney Parrish knocking down the three. And then in transition, look at Pow Pow, just her pace. She's calm, she delivers the ball, and Sabali says, you don't want to guard me, I'm going to take that three. Sharn, just a little bit too strong. Inside, Sedona Prince had it roll out. Rebound taken down by Westbrook, who was on the move. Sobley had it taken away by Ducharme. Get up, get up. And then Sobley took it right back. Westbrook poked it away from Rogers. End to end action now. It's Mule. Contact, but no foul. Got an advantage, got a push right here if you're Oregon. Pow Pow right down the middle. I was talking to Kelly Graves in mid-December and he was talking about Tahina Pow Pow coming from the same high school as Kelsey Plum, Candace Wiggins, and their high school coach says Pow Pow is the best that they've ever coached. And, and that is a huge compliment. And Kelly Graves said she just means so much to our team with her playmaking ability. So well, UConn got off to a fast start. Oregon chipping away down four as we hit our first time out in Eugene. You are watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. Coming to you this afternoon from the gorgeous Pacific Northwest in Eugene, Oregon. UConn up 10 0 at one point. The Ducks have cut it back down to two. And for UConn, a very unusual season. 
and it started December 5th. Paige Beckers got hurt. Hurt her knee, had subsequent surgery a week later, and then they lost it. Mel Fortner's team, Georgia Tech, first unranked loss since 2012, and then about 11 days later, dropped out of the top 10 for the first time since 2005. This is a UConn team that has lost three games, and Husky Nation feels like the like the sky is falling. And you see the, I mean, these impressive streaks, Steph White, we ne might never see again. Yeah, it's likely we'll never see them again. And, you know, it shows that UConn is human now. And Gino Arima talked about the challenges, you know, of this year. It's challenged them in a lot of good ways. It's challenged them in a lot of bad ways. Alpau with the miss. He also said that it is should solidify to everyone why Paige Becker should have been National Player of the Year last year. You say you take her out of our lineup, and he admits that they were not the same team, almost an ordinary team. Well, and you see the numbers right there, but, but you know what I talked about, you know, every good team has one player that really just pulls it together. And, and when you lose that one player, it makes you average. It makes you like everybody else. And he's absolutely right. Paige Beckers is that player for this team, for this program. Prince with the miss. We see some subs in for Oregon. Dushan can't complete it. Number 22 in the bright yellow. Kylie Watson, sophomore from New Jersey. Oregon definitely with the depth advantage this afternoon. Pow Pow with another miss. She has missed four of her five shots. Oregon just shooting 25% as a team. It's still down four. Sedona Prince with the one-handed rebound. Getting in front of Aaliyah Edwards, number three, who's come in for UConn, the Canadian. Wide open. Rogers with the miss again. She had the game-winning shot in the final half second of overtime to beat Arizona on Saturday after she missed 10 of her yes. first 11 shots in that game. Yes, she one for 10, took that out. And there you see Ducharme taking advantage of the mismatch inside. It's very difficult to have help side defense when the ball's in the middle of the floor, and UConn does such a good job of keeping the ball between the lane lines to make those post-entry passes. Boy, Nelson Dodo showing you that she is very handy as far as assists are concerned, averaging three and a half per game as a post player. Good ball reversal, pow, pow! <laughs> this is also an Oregon team pan that Again, we say the second game that they have played in a back-to-back -back game where they've had their full complement of players. So it's going to take them a little time to get their rhythm on the offensive end and the defensive end of the floor as well. They're really in mid to late November form. Parrish with the miss. Look up, look up. Yep, yeah. Edwards was all alone. Great hustle by Pow Pow. But yeah, they were very late. Uh, missed the opportunity to score in transition. Ball inside again. UConn keep running that. Ducharme has a size advantage. They're getting it to her inside. And then really good skip pass in transition. Pow Pow knocks down the three. And Caroline Ducharme at 6'2", a freshman from Milton, Massachusetts, said she grew up as a UConn fan since age eight, but said that she kept an open mind. In fact, took a visit to here in Oregon. As did AZ Fudd before they both signed with Connecticut. Duhas. Oh, that's a tough pass. Good catch by Dushan. Edwards guarded by Prince. Now Westbrook, the kid from Salem, Oregon, wide left. And this is where you got to push on these long rebounds. Push. Oregon does such a good job of using drag screens in transition, but if they can flow into it, get UConn on the defensive. Pow Pow, nice hesitation. And watching her on film, I mean, her ability to change speeds. She doesn't get too rushed. She uses her body, her head and shoulders, her eyes to fake. And an example of what Oregon is when she's not out on the floor. She has been invaluable since coming back from the injury. Westbrook. Uhas with the shot clock at seven. Rebound by Shania Pinto. As Kelly Graves continues to substitute. And going to look to get this last shot. Kelly Graves, they were working in the horns today, but at this point in the, in the ball game, end of quarter, just give her an on-ball screen, let her go to work. 
Now foul. Plowed right in to Juhas, and they call it a blocking foul. Look at Juhas, the transfer from Ohio State. So Pow Pow goes to the free throw line, 86%, just 12 of 14 so far. Thursday, how about a top five matchup in the ACC coming your way? Women's College Basketball, Louisville and NC State. Come on, number three and number four. Coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Game available on the ESPN app. Pow Pow delivering. And she's going to sit down. Kelly Graves going to give her an extra break as Shear comes in to close out the quarter. Oregon with the lead for the first time on a 7 nothing run. UConn missed 11 of its last 12 shots to close out the quarter. They trail by one. And it is indeed We Back Pat Week. You know, worry, Emma, and Pat Summit, they had, some, they had some battles, would you say? They had some terrific battles. And he has great respect. Uh, very different personalities in, in, in many ways, very alike in others. And uh, Pat, the Pat Summit Foundation has done some terrific work in the Alzheimer's research, raising millions of dollars, the Pat Summit Foundation. Adult day centers or respite for caregivers, which is something that a lot of people yes. overlook. It's so hard on family and friends that have to take care of the Alzheimer's people. So the Pat Summit Foundation doing wonderful work. And Oregon has shut down Connecticut. Connecticut got out to a 10-0 lead, and it's been a, story, a different story ever since. Oregon has, has found a way to put the ball in the hole, and UConn has had a, had a hard time over the last few possessions. And again, that's where you, you miss a player like Kristen Williams who can create on her own, who can attack, who can help push in transition. Again, Williams unavailable because she's in, in COVID protocols. But on the defensive end of the floor as well, Gino Ariama talked to us about we have to play a lot more zone now. We, we can't play as much man to man. We don't have the pieces. We've got to play zone. We've seen the last two possessions. They've gone man. And Kristen Williams was one of the main focuses of the scout for Oregon. Jody Berry, the associate head coach, did the scout. And that is bounced in by Shear. So no Kristen Williams. Uh, Steph mentioned she is in protocol. They are saying that Paige Beckers is on track to return in mid-February. No timetable yet for FUD, but they say she is on track as well. Williams bottled up nicely. Juhas. Shot clock winding down. Mule sends it over. They need a shot. And they won't get one off. That is the highest level of activity we've seen on the defensive end thus far by Oregon. They've mixed up their zones. They've mixed up man-to-man -man on that possession. Active hands, active feet. Forced UConn to be uncomfortable on the offensive end. Edwards taking the seat now for Connecticut. And just eight players available for the Huskies this afternoon. They came in yesterday and will charter back east right after the game. Nice crossover. Pow, pow. And a charge as Sobley went into the lane. Two fouls now on Sobley. That's always a tough position right here for a big to be in. A really good read, but terrific rotation by Avina Westbrook. She comes in. She knows the high post dive is coming. She's in position. She takes the charge. So we'll see if Sobley is done for the rest of the half, sitting down with the two personal fouls. Sobley among those coming back from Injury has had a right knee issue. Westbrook, step back, Ducharme, catch, shoot, miss everything, almost. Drag, yes, use the drag in transition. I'm setting a drag every time for Pow Pow if I'm a big coming down the floor. Terrific hustle by Watson, Pow Pow! 
A career high 24 against Arizona. She's playing with confidence. She looks in rhythm. Had a couple of threes in that overtime win. And meanwhile, UConn has Nika Mule down. She is flexing her right wrist as you see. So a timeout on the floor. Oregon up by six. Nika Mule. Taking the fall for the Huskies. We'll have more when we come back to Eugene. Oregon up on UConn, and a big reason is Tahina Pow Pow. She has been tremendous early in this ball game. 12 points, 4-9 from the floor, 2 of 5 from the three-point line. She is dictating tempo. She is playmaking off of screens. Exactly what Kelly Graves talked about, her ability to make plays for herself and others. It's great to see her back on the floor. Such an important component of this team. She told us that she feels she's at about 90%. You see, she is uh, acquitting herself quite nicely already with 12 points. As Steph mentioned, coming off a career high against Arizona day before yesterday, in which she had 24. She's already halfway there. And she said she feels like the team is almost like in mid-November shape. They're getting back together. And it's not just physical shape, right? It's learning to mesh and play together. It is. It's building chemistry. I mean, three pieces, three players who were preseason all Pac-12 picks were not on the floor until they came together in conference play. And so trying to put all that together is going to take some time. Meanwhile, the UConn offense continues to struggle. They have not hit a field goal since two and a half minutes were left in the first quarter. Pow Pow, guarded by Ducharm. The defense down low, but what an effort by Kylie Watson. That's a good confidence builder for Kylie Watson. She has struggled, didn't even have a field goal attempt in three minutes against Arizona. And she was one of the players that UConn wasn't Actually would have been happy, she right. would, especially <laughs> to shoot from the outside, but she earned that two points. UConn's drought continues. Again, I think I think Oregon can go right into that on-ball screen, that drag and transition. Now you got a mismatch. you got to take advantage of it. You don't need that screen. Nope, Watson came up. Prince left open, buried it. Sedona Prince really started the rally in the fourth quarter against Arizona. Back to her natural position, playing around that high post. Oregon up 10. Welcome back. Oregon has hit its last three shots. Sedona Prince this time. Kelly Graves said that is exactly where she's most successful, and Niara Sabali is loving it. When I was talking to him in mid-December, he had said Sedona Prince is a high post, around the elbow type of player. That's where she feels most comfortable. She was having to play back to the basket because Niara Sabli was not on the floor. He said she will benefit most when Sabli gets back, and she's played with such great confidence. Yeah, a lot of freedom out there for the redshirt junior. Started her career at Texas. You might recall she didn't play there after suffering a really a horrific leg injury for USA Basketball. And UConn just can't get anything going. Prince runs into Mule and a blocking foul. Good to see Nika Mule out there after she was shaken up a little bit earlier. NBA Wednesday doubleheader coming your way. The Hornets square off against the Celtics, starting things off at 7.30 Eastern. That's 4.30 Oregon time. Then the Clippers take on the Nuggets. NBA doubleheader available on ESPN and the app. Coming your way on Wednesday, Prince at the line. And it was Sedona Prince who had the, uh, the social media posts that shook up the world a little bit last year at the Final Four, showing the disparity between the uh, men and women's weight rooms. If you could call it a weight yes. room at the time. Weight area. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Kelly Graves was talking about Sedona Prince's social media presence. He said she's benefited tremendously as Nelson Adota gets two from NIL. He said she's got a lot of pressure because of it, and she handles it so well. You can just see her laid-back personality, really easygoing. 
He said everybody around here loves Sedona. Yeah, she seems to a perfect fit for this part she of does. the country, doesn't she? That was the first field goal for UConn since two and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. Here's Prince again. Left it a little bit short. Rebound Mule. UConn looking to run, but they do not have numbers. Avina Westbrook's from Salem, Oregon. That's about midway between Eugene and Portland. As you head north on I-5. She said she was going to have a lot of people here. It was really special. Going to be an emotional day playing back at home. Charm with the miss. Prince could box out. Block, box out excuse me. She didn't even have to jump for that. No. Prince at 6-7. Oh, nice pass. And then a whistle underneath. Brenda Pantoya, Michael Price, and Infinity, Infinity Robinson, excuse me, our officials this afternoon in Eugene. That was a personal foul called on Westbrook, her first. Rogers getting a hand from this crowd. Nice crowd on hand. Boy, they're up even in the upper deck of Matthew Knight Arena. Holds about 12,000 and change. Martin Luther King Jr. Day at 2 o'clock local time tip. And there you see him. See a lot of that green and green and gold or green and yellow as you walk around town. Well, Kelly Graves had, had talked about Sabrina, Sabrina Inescu, and we saw her here yesterday, and just what she has done for this program, much in the same way that Courtney Vandersloot did for his Gonzaga programs. And basketball fans want to see great players. They want to see great teams. And, you know, the old if you build it, they will come. They've built it here, and they are out in full support. Yeah, they certainly have. Kelly Graves did such a great job at Gonzaga. Eight NCAA tournaments, a couple of Sweet 16s, and an Elite Eight. And, yeah, they had Courtney Vandersloot. Pretty good point guard. And getting Sabrina Ionescu here from Northern California changed this program around. So quite a few people here with their number 20 jerseys still for her. Good play by Nelson Adota. Leads to the easiest bucket so far, I think, for UConn. That's Westbrook. UConn doesn't have a lot of depth, but when they have opportunities to push in transition, they need to take advantage of it. Buckets, easy buckets are hard to come by. And Westbrook missed her first four shots before that one. Mule, that's a foul. Sophomore from Croatia. Starting for Kristen Williams. Again, if you're just joining us, the 5'11 senior guard who such an important contributor on this team, averaging almost 15 points per game unavailable in COVID protocol for the Huskies. Prince, nice catch! And the turnaround. For great patience. On the out of bounds play, option one, two, and three weren't there. Maddie Shear able to deliver to Sedona Prince. Gino you know Arim was talking to his team today in shoot around about being disciplined and not fouling. And right now they're giving Oregon opportunities at the foul line. And a lot of these are little touch fouls. And he was telling them, if you get three or four fouls, he said, I don't care how many people I have available, I'm going to sit you down if you commit silly fouls. That's... Good work, Nelson Adota. I love how aggressive Nelson Adota is being on the offensive end of the floor. I mean, she's a player who can score it. She's a terrific facilitator from that position. But they need her to put the ball in the hole. Yep, into double figures down with 10. Prince, sweet spot. She can score in bunches. She had 10 in the fourth quarter against Arizona. We're seeing her get active and play with confidence right now. Finished with 16, as you mentioned, 10 in that decisive fourth quarter on Saturday. They were down 17 in that game in the third and came back to win in overtime. Watson called for that foul. Let's go over to Monica McNutt. What do we have coming up at halftime? Thanks, ma'am. Well, coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report, of course, we'll digest this game, or dissect, I should say, with Coach Nikki Fargus. And then we're talking Wee Backpack and her legacy across the world of women's basketball. That's coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report. I think we can digest it as well, Monica. And uh, so, well, it's so great to have Monica and Nikki it here is, on, yes. in person at the arena in Eugene. 
talk about for Oregon, Corey Prince. Gosh, she can't catch the ball there, Steph. No, no. and, and you know, this is a really tough Oregon team to defend because they're so balanced, because now that they have all their pieces together, Kelly Graves can put them exactly where he wants them, whether it be against man-to-man, -man, against zone. And UConn playing that 2-3, you have to cover that high post area. Gosh, and Ducharme has really had a hard time. She's taken 11 shots, hit four of them, but it's 0 for 5 from 3, turned it over on that trip. Nothing easy for the Huskies. Their losses to South Carolina, Georgia Tech, and Louisville trailing here to an unranked Oregon team. Leah Edwards. Oh, that hurts. The extra shuffle. Aaliyah Edwards did such a good job of getting in the passing lane right here. That's a long pass across court. And you'll see when she picks it up, the one, two, three. And the fans behind us chanting, you can't do that. <laughs> You're right. You can at the next level sometimes. Yes, yeah, true. Three missed by Rogers. Here comes Mule. No, you're not used to talking about UConn teams having a small margin for error. As if Olivia Nelson Adota goes to work, but the travel called underneath. But this is a, a team that has been decimated by injury. Now Kristen Williams in COVID protocol, so margin for error is really slim. Have to take advantage when you have opportunities. And here's Nelson Adota down low. Yeah, the right foot shuffled just a little bit. 11 turnovers for the Huskies. Oregon has turned them so far into eight points. Minute and a half left to go in the first half. Number 15, Filipina Che in for Oregon. There she is, Kelly Graves says she's Tierra McCowan-like. Got fouled. Yeah, he really had a lot of high praise for Filipina Che. Said she loves the game. She just, she hasn't been playing very long. She's got great hands. She studies. She wants to, she's a film rat. She wants to get better. And he did. He said she's like Tierra McCown was at this age. And oh yeah, she's 6'8". <laughs> and Canadian. She's from Calgary. And a lefty. That one for LaChina Robinson. We have a really good Super Tuesday doubleheader for you tomorrow night. Men's basketball. How about Kansas and Norman to take on Oklahoma? And then follow that up in the ACC as Duke takes on Florida State. Both games on ESPN in the app. One app, one tap. Again, men's basketball tomorrow night. UConn led 10-0. Hard to believe right now, isn't it? Mule, nope. Not a lot of second chance opportunities either. Here's Pow Pow. Good ball fake. They lost Prince. Damn, Pow Pow's just so good. I mean, she, she just waits for things to develop. She doesn't get rushed. She pulled it out. She saw it before it happened. Prince just kept running. She's only a sophomore. Runner by Ducharme finally gets something to fall. Making that 6 0 run. Contact counted! India Rogers. Another playmaker gets back on the floor. Rogers hangs, draws the contact, and finishes. First one on Ducharme. Sedona Rogers goes out. But Sedona Prince, excuse me, gets a huge ovation from this crowd. Kelly Graves continuing to run in people. He doesn't know what to do with so many no. subs on the bench. And he's played 10. UConn has gotten only six players, six of their eight available into the game. Shot clock is off. Huskies down 15. Westbrook, the Oregon native. Inside blocked by 
Chen. And the Oregon Ducks, after falling behind 10-0, outscore the Huskies 39-14 the rest of the half. And they take a chunky 15-point lead into the locker room. Welcome to Big Monday, presented by LinkedIn. And it was a big first half for Tahina Pow Pow, a dozen points, and she and Sedona Prince, she also had 12 points. My goodness, Oregon leading UConn 39 to 24, while Oregon joined Georgia Tech as the second unranked team to beat UConn this season, something that hadn't happened in a decade. Even to lose once to an unranked team. Pam Ward along with former Wade Trophy winner Stephanie White. And boy, UConn shorthanded just eight players today. Uh, Kristen Williams unavailable and COVID protocol got off to a great start, but things changed quickly. Yeah, they really did. They shot the ball very well the first part of that first quarter, and then they cooled off significantly. Just not enough offensive firepower in that first half for UConn. But Oregon got going. They started off cold, and they got going on the offensive end, and Tahina Pow Pow was one of the main reasons why. She single-handedly is controlling the ball game for Oregon. She started off by getting to the rim, knocking down a couple of threes. She is a playmaker for herself and for others, and what impresses me most right now is it's just her pace of the game. She doesn't get rushed. She dictates. She understands when, where, who, and how to get the basketball to her teammates. And we're going to watch this in transition. We're going to start it right here on a freeze. And as we roll it, check out Pow Pow looking over her shoulder. She sees Sedona Prince. Freeze it right here. One defender, two defender. And then right here, Sedona Prince running the floor. Watch how Pow Pow stops. She engages those defenders. She has an eye on Prince. She waits for just the right time to deliver the pass. Gets Sedona Prince an easy two. Yeah, Tahina Pow Pow showing how special she is. Ducharme and Elsa Dodoto doing most of the work for UConn, who did not hit a three in the first half. UConn 0 for 8 from distance. And Pow Pow, in addition to the 12 points, also has six rebounds, which is only three off of her career high. Coming back from an injury, reason to smile, and Gina Oriama knowing that this is going to be a tough out for them. Remember the last time they played? It was in stores, and Connecticut lost that game 74-56. to It was two years ago, their worst loss ever at Gamble. Yeah. A lot of firsts, yeah. you know, for Gina Oriama and for, for UConn. You know, over the course of the last couple of years, and we saw the numbers right there. It's going to be really important for the Huskies to establish themselves with some high percentage shots. Look at them to attack that high post of the zone. Ducharme trying to get it inside. Now Sedota, good pass and a nice result for Juhas, who gets the bucket. That is her first field goal. Only took two shots in the first half. Maddie Shear getting it over to Pow Pow, guarded by Westbrook. The drive, nice block, and the big primal scream from Nelson Adota. Nelson Adota coming off a game where she had a career high eight blocks. And boy, she sends a message right there. Don't bring this in here. Averaging over two blocks a game. Yep, a career high eight blocks and five steals in their last game against Xavier, but everything's going well for Pow Pow. Sometimes you have it like that, Pam. Sometimes you do. I loved her energy yesterday in practice. She was vocal, you know, she was active, and that is a good sign for UConn. Avina Westbrook has got to be more assertive on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, absolutely. That's the first three made by the Huskies this afternoon. Just two points for Avina in the first half. Well, Avina Westbrook has the experience. She understands what it takes. I remember early in the season, Rebecca Lobo was calling on Avina Westbrook to be that score when Paige Beckers went out with injury, and she's been inconsistent offensively, and Ducharme with the two. Yeah, Caroline Ducharme, the freshman from Massachusetts, as you take a look at Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd sitting side by side on the bench. There's so much talent on the bench, so many points sitting there. Pow, pow! A little bit too strong. Good rebound, Juhas. Dodge one right there. She's hit three threes. I wouldn't be going under any screens. Sedona Prince going to check in at the next whistle for Oregon. Juhas 
Cross missed everything. Pow Pow with another rebound. Got a space right here if you're Rogers. If they're going to set that middle screen for Pow Pow, you got to give her some space. Sobley working against you, Haas. One on one, a little bit of separation and works. The little sister, Niara <laughs> Satsu Sobley, who we all know from Oregon in the WNBA. And Niara might be. Well, one of the things Kelly Grace right? yeah, was talking about was she, she was. So Stu Charm hits the three. And everybody talked about Satu much more polished than Niara early in her career, and that Niara had a potential to be better. She's been saddled with injuries much of her career, is finally healthy this season and making an impact. Now, number one, Sabali missed the first two seasons with knee injuries. Another three, this time it's Parrish. We check that Shear. Maddie Shear knocking it down. Oregon leading UConn 47 to 34, and they're grabbing money here in Matthew Knight Arena. Are you kidding me? I don't know what this is, but I love it. How much do you think you could grab there, Pam? Uh, about $4, probably. <laughs> well, Oregon has certainly been money from the three-point line. Six three-point shots on the day. UConn started in the zone. Oregon struggled the first few possessions, but boy, they found it. Six of those threes. Four of them in the first half, and Tahina Pow, Tahina Pow Pow has three of them. She has been lighting it up. They're finding it all over the floor. And the thing that I like most about Oregon is they struggled early, but they stayed within their offensive system. They stayed within their offensive flow. They were stagnant. Once they became, once they started moving more, started passing around the perimeter, getting paint touches as well, started opening up, and they were knocking them down. Best three-point shooting team in the Pac-12. Starting to come alive. Playing defense, Sobley forced that bobble. And then Prince and Sobley ganged up on Nelson Adota. Adona Prince back in the game. She was the first one out of the locker room, no surprise, right? When they came back for the <laughs> yes. second half, all energy. Gave us a nice big smile over here when she came out, ready to play. Good first half. It's Michael Price on the back. Mule in the starting lineup. Here's Ducharme. Offensive rebound by Westbrook gives him a fresh 20. Yuha's left open, did not get the bounce. Rebound, though, goes right back to her for the follow. Really good job of staying active on the offensive glass by UConn, getting multiple possessions, multiple opportunities to convert. Oregon's biggest lead was 16 points. Now down to 11. 12 points already in this quarter for the Huskies. In the first four minutes. Here comes Westbrook. UConn has only played six players this afternoon. They have no bench points. Nelson Adota, short, rebound Ducharme. And Yuhas gets tied up. Possession arrow gives it back to the Ducks. Ball goes to the Ducks. There you see the bench. Never a good sign, Steph, right? When you have all these people wearing sweats. No, it, it sure yeah, isn't. It is UConn, as well as lots of different teams in the country, decimated by injury. But you take Paige Beckers off the floor, and you, you lose the identity of the team. You know, you lose the identity of, of a team that's held together by what she does. I mean, she, she is a player who scored or assisted on nearly 60% of UConn's offense. Sedona Prince having herself a weekend, a double-double in the overtime win against Arizona. And she is rolling tonight. Defense Sabali. Bringing the ball up all the way. Niara Sabali coast to coast. 
going forward, Pam, when you have a player like Niara Sabli that can rebound the basketball, bring it down the floor, score in transition. Uh, everybody hitting the deck. India Rogers, they're on their feet. Oregon. Up big. Welcome back, the Oregon Duck and all the other Ducks are having a great time as they leave UConn 53-36. Niara Sabli showing she's one special player. Yeah, she sure is. A really good defensive play inside on Olivia Nelson, Adota. Gets a hand on it, doesn't need to pass it ahead. She has it, she's looking. Look, her head's up, her eyes are up. She didn't see anybody in front of her, so she finishes in transition. Oregon has 14 points off of 13 UConn turnovers. Just the eighth game of the year for Sobley, says her conditioning is coming back. And there you see the big three who scored 60 of their 68 points in the overtime win Saturday against Arizona have combined for 36, matching UConn's total. Edwards in the game. Still no bench points for the Huskies. Westbrook got fouled by Shear. First one for Shear. And sends Adina Westbrook to the line. Started her collegiate career at Tennessee. Had the red shirt after she transferred. Last year started every game for this team and is back home in Oregon. Coming up Thursday, a great women's basketball top five matchup in the ACC. Can't wait. It's Louisville and NC State. Coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN and also on the app. Louisville, one of the three teams that has beaten UConn this year, along with South Carolina and Georgia Tech. And NC State looking like every bit of a Final Four team. Yes, they have really started to come along. The ACC, unlike the men's side in the ACC, the women's side, it's six ranked. Virginia Tech mm -hmm. should, be, should in be in there. In there. Yep, yeah, that's the right. ACC is so deep on the women's side. Louisville and NC State so far the cream of the crop. Well, that's going to be a great one coming up on Thursday. Meanwhile, here it's in Oregon. They trailed 10 nothing to start. That's a mismatch. Good work. Oh, my. Pow Pow. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love that Pow Pow just recognizes the mismatch right away. And when the post player doesn't roll to the rim and look for it on the guard, Pow Pow takes advantage of going against the big. And remember, she's only a sophomore. That's <laughs> terrifying. It's scary. She's got 17 points inside trying to get to Ododo, and Prince reached in to pick up the foul. And again, a, a lot of guards just try to beat big with speed. I mean, she, she gets around her, she uses a move, she uses a, a what? A little shot fake? And then she, she says, yes, I'm strong. Little girls can get in here too. Same high school as Kelsey Clark, right? That's right. Candace Wiggins. Candace Wiggins. Something going on in the water there in La Jolla. Edward's able to get it out of trouble. Westbrook found some space, short, Sobley boards it. And quickly gets it over to Pow Pow. See why this team is ranked 10th in the preseason. They will be back in the rankings soon. Good pass. That's a really good look. Now Edward's turn to bring it up. Good pass. Cut off by Rogers. Oh, you admit they, they have been missing Olivia Nelson Adota all night long. If you get it to her two seconds or one second before that, she's got to lay up uncontested. Did she have to work for that one? Nice finish. She's been sealing, she's been open, but the ball has not been delivered on time. Dear Rogers. But she was excited to play this game to get 
Oregon back into the national discussion. And when people see the score, if it holds up, they will be there. Another turnover. Shearer has played some point this year for Oregon, so helps bring it up. It's been the Pow Pow show. She got clobbered on the way to the bucket. Game back. He played all of three minutes before that stretch. Running back from a leg injury. Missed last year's last five games, including the tournament. Pow Pow now three for three at the line as we see the bodies coming in for Oregon and. This is the production that is lost. Williams in COVID protocol, Paige Beckers, only playing the first six games, got hurt against Notre Dame and AZ FUD. Four games, and how tough. I know you hurt your foot in the national championship game when Purdue did do. How tough must this be to sit and watch? It's hard. I mean, it really is. It's, it's, it's hard to watch anyway, uh, let alone when you're watching your team struggle and you want to be a part of, of, of making it better. And, you know, we saw Paige Beckers out there on the floor today and shoot around and just itching to get back out there. Yeah, and that's the good news for UConn fans as you take a look at Paige and AZ Fudd to on screen right. This was this was pregame. About a month out of surgery. Still chucking them up from the outside and having fun. And having fun, enjoying it, yep. And Easy Fudd just last week started to run on the treadmill, which is good news, but still not ready to come back, hoping to have them for the run in March. And that's an offensive foul. And we haven't even mentioned Aubrey Griffin, who has been out the entire season and will be out the remainder of the season. But when you take away a, page, a player like Paige Beckers again, I mean, she, she scores or, or facilitates and, and really runs the show for UConn. When you take her out, everybody has to play outside of what their normal role. And, and, and Gina Oriema and Kelly Graves, they both recruit pieces that have to fit together in order for their teams to be successful. And that is one big component to take out. Good hustle again by Rogers. Floater. Edwards able to rebound it for the Huskies as we're inside a minute to go in the third quarter. You don't want to try to get in a running game with Oregon if you're UConn. These are some possessions where you need to get it out and try to run offense. Elise Hurst comes into the game and nails a three. That's her specialty, the Australian. Seventh three of the game for Oregon. Westbrook, good close by Rogers. Edwards left open. Navina Westbrook just looks timid to me. Not aggressive with the ball. She comes off of an on-ball screen, picks it up after one dribble. I mean, she's a player that UConn needs to be assertive and aggressive on the offensive end of the floor. You know, she has struggled, um, and she's been inconsistent and been up and down, and they need her to step up. Yeah, especially now, right? Where we yes. just showed you all the production sitting on the bench, injured or ill for UConn. Shot clock's off inside 10 seconds. Westbrook. Got it. Much needed for Avina Westbrook to close out the third quarter, but UConn outscored by six in that quarter. It's a big 62-41 lead for the Ducks. Can she? Because she had missed, what, 10 of 11 yes, before that she one? Had. And look at the last four. Yep. Finally healthy. Look out for the Ducks. And what a big confidence booster. I mean, this is a team that talks about being back in the national conversation. Kelly Graves, when I was talking to him in mid-December, he said, watch out for us in February, March. If we can put ourselves in position to get into the NCAA tournament, we will be a tough out. And with a win against Arizona, if they can hold on to get a win against UConn, they're putting so themselves in position to get in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, absolutely, quality wins, and then they'll be getting deeper into the Pac-12 
which is difficult. Still no bench points for the Huskies. Rebound taken down by Kylie Watson. Oregon still has to play Stanford. They will play just once. Lost to them earlier this month, so they got them again. Very different Oregon team, though, will be playing Stanford when they have the rematch. Nice look, Sobley to Pinto. One thing Kelly Graves said about Yara Sobley is that you can't ever guard her with one person. Everybody's eyes are on her when she gets the ball, and because of that, she's able to find her open teammates just like that. And look at that, gosh. Ducharme, her first shot in the wild falls. Freshman that has been averaging 16 points since Beckers went out with her injury in the sixth game. She is 18 right now. Good, another block for Nelson Odota. That is her second block of the afternoon. Roger's going to have to shoot. Good pass. Yep, instead she passes. Got it! Another three for Hurst. And again, when you get players back in their natural positions, when you get players who can play their role that they were meant to play, like Hurst, she's a catch-and-shoot shooter. Playmakers are back on the floor, and they make her better. Yeah, Hurst, about 70% of her shots come from beyond the arc, and she's good at it. And early in the season, she was having to, to handle the ball. She was having to run the point. And now India Rogers finds her, shot clock winding down, gets her the ball in a position where she is most successful. Good hand for Rogers. If she takes a break, Hurst is from Bendigo, Australia. Is a great player at New Mexico. Honorable mention, Mountain West last year, now playing here in Eugene. A lot of passes on that possession. Hurst, that time, has a go over. He gets the big smile. You gonna get that? Well, you know I would, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. got you have to put on. Yeah, that's yeah. True. Have to get unwired and everything. <laughs> they might have to get that after the game when they bring the bring the basket down. Yeah, Billy Graves said he's gonna do oh, it. He's like, go. I got it for you. Oh. oh, first try. <laughs> now, if that would have gone in the basket, this place would have exploded, right? <laughs> MVP. He's, he's got some skills. MVP, MVP, <laughs> the student section behind us starts yelling MVP for Coach Graves. Big smiles for everyone up 24. You said that like you were questioning the I, massive, I, massive. I have no idea. They're up a lot. It's a chunky lead for the Ducks. Nelson Adota still working hard, held by Prince. And Nelson Adota has been impressive. I mean, she's been aggressive on the offensive end. She, we know she's a terrific facilitator. But she's being vocal as well. I mean, she, she, she's being vocal in the huddles. Six assists to go along with her 12 points. And again, they missed like the timing of when she gets the basketball is so important. It doesn't have to be that difficult, but that is a heck of a play. If you can get a big the ball when they're open, it makes their life so much easier. Right here, though, heck of a move on, on the baseline, strong finish on the reverse. That's four fouls now on Prince, who sits down, Coach Graves talking to her before she does. Kylie yeah. Watson comes away with it. Seven minutes to go as Pow Pow looks over and gets a play call from Coach Graves. 
and look for Oregon to continue to attack that high post and short corner looks. When you get the ball in the middle of the zone, you have a lot of options. Hurst has missed a couple of threes after hitting her first two, but an offensive board by Pinto, floater, in and out. By right, Pow Pow. And then the finish on the other end for Caroline Ducharme. I really enjoyed talking to her and just, you know, her perspective on her expectations coming to UConn, her expectations of whether she was going to play or not. Playing behind Paige Beckers, you're not going to get a lot of minutes. There aren't a lot of minutes to be had, but that she prepped every day, awaiting her opportunity, and when she got it, she took advantage of it. So the UConn Huskies lost to Georgia Tech earlier this year when Georgia Tech was unranked. They've not lost to more than one unranked team since way back in 03 04. That kind of a season, we talked to Gino Oriema, asked him if it was his toughest season. And it has certainly been, I mean, you can't, you have these expectations, uh, and then your best player, the, literally the national player of the year, there she is on the left, Paige Beckers is a freshman, was the first freshman to ever win the Naismith, Wooden, and AP National Player of the Year. That good. Yeah, I mean, you know, Oriama talked to us about, you know, you, you lose a player like Paige Beckers, and again, you take, you take that player off of any team and what it does to your team, the expectations of UConn fans and the schedule being what it is. Nice tie-up. Yeah, UConn fans not used to them losing. They've lost three straight, or three games this year, pardon me. Remember, they're on a 13-year Final Four streak, losing here to Oregon. Welcome back to Eugene, Oregon, as we honor Pat Summit and her continued impact on women's basketball, both on and off the court. We back Pat, Pam Ward, along with Steph White, and uh, we, we both have the honor of, of knowing Pat Summit and some of your special memories. Yeah, you know, I, one of the most special memories I have of Pat was when I was working in broadcasting, one of the very first games that I called, and um, I had emailed Debbie Jennings, and I said, hey, Debbie, I'd, I'd love to get a hold of Pat and talk to her before I come down. Don't want to have to bother her and shoot around. She's like, sure, here's her cell phone. I mean, she gave me Pat Summit's cell phone number. Yeah. I called Pat. She was so gracious with her time. She talked for like 30, 40 minutes, you know, asking me how I was, how things were going, not just about her team. Then we go down and in shoot around, she invites us into film session, right? I mean, Pat Summit paved the way, opened the door, grew the game of basketball because of her willingness to be open, because of her willingness to invite media in to see behind the scenes, to connect with an audience in a way that most coaches wouldn't and most coaches don't. And it was such a special moment for me. I remember saying at that moment, I, I want to be that kind of coach. I want to be that kind of coach. Yeah, to be that gracious and, and setting such a high bar. And as people know, as the game grew, she would play anybody. Yep. Because she would go out. She would go out to Stanford, up to Connecticut, getting that great rivalry going to get the game on national television. Our former colleague, Carol Stipp, certainly was a major yes. component of getting those matchups. And, and Pat was the most humble superstar you'd ever want to meet. Yes, she sure was. You know, as a player and as a, as, a, as a young person, you know, being recruited as a high school athlete, whenever Pat Summit was in the gym, you couldn't help but want to impress her. Yeah. And she owned every room she walked into with those steely blue eyes, but couldn't be more kind as Sobley. Tough turnaround. And then, boy, Sobley hit the deck hard. Niara Sobley is shaken up behind the play. Mule misses on the other end, but the concern now is with Sobley. Kim Terrell is the athletic trainer as it gets dead quiet here at Matthew Knight Arena. Coach Graves out there as well. This is Sobley's fifth game back after missing seven of the last eight. Hurt her right knee early in the season, and that was a hard fall.
Oh, yeah, Maddie Shear came right into Sabali's leg. You know, there's... Oh, you hate to see that. She was talking to us about how much work she's been putting into all of her rehab, pre, post practices. And that was the, that's the problematic right Number knee four, that Andy appeared Rogers. to take the brunt of that. And she is helped back into the dressing room. A couple of ACLs that wiped out her first two years here in Oregon before she was finally able to play. And that's put a damper on what has been a very celebratory afternoon for Oregon. Shot clock winding down. He's talking about Pat Summit too, the Pat Summit Foundation, patsummit.org. They've come up with a, a, a caregivers initiative as well. They just celebrated its 10th, 10 year anniversary. And again, if you want to go to patsummit.org to look into the great programs and the awareness after she was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Yeah, and, and, and the numbers are staggering, Pam. I mean, 6 million Americans living with Alzheimer's disease, 11 million unpaid caregivers, and what the Pat Summit Foundation is doing for support, not only for research in the disease, but for caregivers. Yeah, the respite for caregivers, the adult day centers that they are starting to set up. A big presence in Tennessee now, but starting to branch out all across the country. Fans here in Eugene counting down. Prince knocks it out of bounds. Remember, this this would be not a bad 48-hour stretch, right? You beat Arizona, who's in the top 10, and and then you're thumping UConn. Yeah, no, there's no question. I mean, and just the confidence that this team is building, you know, getting players back on the floor and playing well together. I mean, it's not easy. You look back at, at some of the losses that they had and November and December to be where they are now and to know that their best basketball is ahead of them. Boy, Westbrook with a terrific pass to Ducharme. And Coach Oriema said he'd love to run with his team, but obviously, well, not so obviously perhaps, but could not do that because of the just eight players available and they've only played six. Edwards is the only player to come off the bench this afternoon for the Huskies. Super wildcard weekend capped off tonight. You know, there's Monday night football playoff stuff on ESPN ABC and ESPN Plus. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals taking on Matthew Stafford and the Rams at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. There's a mega cast coverage with Peyton and Eli right here on ESPN2 and ESPN Plus between the lines on ESPN Plus and the ESPN Deportes Spanish language version. We got it covered, and here's the comparison. Matthew Stafford is not in Detroit anymore. He's playing in the playoffs. <laughs> he's game. happy he's not in Detroit anymore. With all due respect, <laughs> those long-suffering Lions fans, bless your heart, but that's going to be a great matchup coming up tonight. That's exciting, right? We got it is. playoff football on a Monday night. It is exciting. Who you got, Pam? I'm going to go with the fighting Matthew Stafford. You that are, one, yeah, think, that's, yeah. That's probably a yeah. good choice. Yeah, Arizona right. seems to have hit a little downfall the yeah. latter half of the season. It's a little early. There are no Tennessee Titans, right? No, they're not. <laughs> Nashville excited about them. We sure are. Can't connect with Edwards. Are you sure I'm getting so much experience? And now some pressure from UConn. And you wonder what lies ahead for Connecticut. They're playing in the Big East, back in the Big East for the second straight season after the American Conference in which they lost exactly zero games. <laughs> they were 139-0. and 0, Yeah. And off to a similar start in the Big East. Watson with the follow. And Yara Sabali is back sitting on the Oregon bench with ice on her right knee. Only hope for the best yes. for Niara, especially as you mentioned, boys, so much work to come back. 
Nika Mule gets the three-pointer, her first points of the game. Well, I think this is, you know, you, you mentioned what, what, what happens next for UConn. I mean, this is a UConn this team as Pow Pow knocks in another three. It has opportunity in conference play to build some confidence with some of their other pieces, get Kristen Williams back. Of course, have a matchup early February with Tennessee. And before that, they play South Carolina for the Again. second time this year, and that will be in Columbia. They played them earlier this year in the Bahamas and lost by 16. And there's Gino. 2007, that was a Sylvia Fowles, Simone Augustus, Simone Augustus era, right? Yes, that's right. When they beat them, it, I believe that was, might have been out in Fresno. Might have been there. That was... Uh, and again, Husky fans aren't used to losing, much less by scores like this. But they're hoping to get Paige Beckers back in mid-February. Well, what a jolt that would be. I mean, if you can get Paige Beckers back, if she can, you know, work her way to, to being healthy, to being confident, getting on the floor. An easy FUD, the number one recruit like Paige was the year before. Nelson has played a really good game. She has. She's been solid. She's been aggressive. She's been a great leader. Yeah, she doesn't care that they're down 20. She's still working hard. And that's one thing with UConn. They, they're perennially great condition. They're going to play hard from whistle to whistle. When you go to practices, if you're ever fortunate enough to go, the, the paces that his staff and Gino puts him through is very impressive. It is, and he was even talking today in shoot around about how hard you have to cut, how quickly you have to move. I mean, there's a pace with which you have to do everything in order to be successful, and he holds him to that standard. And the precision under which and the excellence that has been part of his career. In a minute. Left to go now in this game. Sports Center is coming up next. They will get you ready for playoff football. Beware the Ducks, right? This is not, you know, they're going to go to 10 and 5 on the year. I think that Sobley will be okay. They play at Washington, at Washington State later. Still have that rematch against Arizona. Yes. Got a little chippy yeah, here on Saturday. Yeah, sure did. That rematch will be an electric atmosphere. February 4th in Tucson. Oregon coming back from a double-digit deficit in the third quarter to win an overtime on Saturday. And then you cap it off with an MLK Day victory over UConn. Husky's going to get back on the charter, go back east. Nice, Ducharme getting it into Edwards. Those are the first bench points for Connecticut today. And it happened with about 25 seconds left to go. And the fans at Matthew Knight Arena rise as one. The Oregon Ducks have beaten UConn. 72-59, the second straight time they have taken him in convincing fashion, doing that also the last time they met.